Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 15th of September 2011. The Solar Spot Fest continues. But before we get to that, our trivia question. The most recent full moon was the Harvest Moon because it was the closest to the autumnal equinox. The trivia question is how many full moons will we have in the year 2011? The answer will be given at the end. Well, we've had so many sea flares in the last 24 hours that I'm finding it difficult to keep count. However, we've not had a single M flare as yet. So why are we having all this minor flaring activity and no major flares? So let's take a look at the active regions and see if we can find out why. We have 10 officially numbered active regions on the disk at the moment, plus 3 as yet unnumbered regions. So let's take a look at each one individually, starting with region 1287 in the southwest. As you can see from these pictures, it's very close to the limb and it's very difficult to tell whether this region is in fact growing or uh, decaying. But we're going to be losing it today, so I think the point is moot. Next we'll take a look at regions 1289 and 1293 in the northwest. Region 1289 is by far the largest group around, but has produced no sea flares. It looks as though it's grown somewhat overnight. You can see that the major spot has continued to elongate and the satellite spots are more prominent. Similarly, region 1293 has grown. The leader spot is much larger and has got a bigger penumbra and the trailer spot has developed as well. Further, a new region which is as yet unnumbered has appeared out to its west. This growth has been very rapid, so this region is worth keeping an eye on. Next we move to the southwest and look at regions 1290 and the newly numbered region 1297. Clearly region 1290 has decayed significantly overnight, yet it is claimed that it's produced four sea flares, whereas region 1297 has grown very rapidly and is quite an impressive region, and they claim that it's only produced two sea flares. I think there's been some misidentification of flares here, but I have no way of checking, so I guess it'll just have to stand that way. Region 1292 is nearing disk centre in the Northern Hemisphere, and it doesn't seem to have changed a great deal overnight. However, there is a new region propping up ahead of it, but there's just a collection of very small pores, and the magnetic field looks quite disorganised, so I don't expect this region to amount to much. Next we take a look at region 1294 in the south. It is a relatively modest sized region, but it looks as though it's decaying currently, despite what NOAA claims to be the increase in area. Not surprisingly, this region has produced no flares in the last 24 hours. Next we'll take a look at the complex of 1295, 1296 and 1298 in the northeast. 1298 is newly numbered since yesterday. There has only been one flare, possibly two flares, associated with these three regions. Anyway, I'm surprised that these regions have not produced more flares because First of all, they're quite strong, they're changing quite rapidly, and they have a chance to interact with one another. We've already mentioned two of the as yet unnumbered regions. The third one is down in the southeast, and is a conglomeration of small spots. It's worth keeping an eye on, but at the moment I don't think it's going to produce very much in the way of flares. So overall, solar activity has been rated as low, despite there being so many regions on the sun. This is mainly because the regions are relatively small, they're changing relatively slowly, and they're not interacting a great deal with one another, which means they're not moving around a great deal. You need all three of those factors, plus strong magnetic field, to produce a big flare. Trying to keep track of all these changes can give you a headache. So here are the um, movies from the HMI instrument of the sunspots and the magnetic field to give you a hand here. Follow your favourite region and see how it evolves. You may want to go through this several times in full screen mode to see the details. Personally, I like to follow the emergence of new regions, so you may want to concentrate on those three regions that have emerged overnight. I'm pleased to say that we have the AIA instrument uh, movies back to where they were before. I'd like to think it was my complaints that did made a difference, but I don't know that. If remember correctly, I was recommending keeping an eye on that prominence on the northeast limb. And just a few hours after I posted the video, it looked like this. There is a beautiful uh, eruption going on and we should look for a coronal mass ejection off of the northeast limb at this time. In the movie, keep an eye on the southwest, where regions 1290 and 1297 are. It looks to me that most of the activity, i.e. the flaring, is coming from 1297, which would mean that those flare identifications were indeed wrong. I found this rather intriguing picture buried in amongst the uh, data from the AIA instrument. What are we seeing here? Well, as we're getting close to the autumnal equinox, the spacecraft is going into eclipse which means it's going into the Earth's shadow. And in this particular case, the spacecraft went through the Earth's shadow just with the northern hemisphere of the Sun 
peaking above the atmosphere. I just thought that was neat. In the low temperature corona movie you can see all the different regions at once, both in the northern and the southern hemisphere. The sun seems to really filled in now and seems to be moving more rapidly towards solar maximum. In the high temperature coronal image from the SXI instrument on GOES, you can see there are two new regions coming over the east limb. In the coronagraph data from SOHO, we can see that there is indeed a small coronal mass ejection off the northeast limb, probably associated with that filament eruption. However, there's also a halo event that seems to be heading either straight at or straight away from the Earth. So we'll need to take a look at the stereo data to see which way it was going. For this we'll use the stereo A data and in these circumstances the Earth is on the left in these images. And you can see that the second coronal mass ejection here is headed basically at the Earth. It's a relatively slow one at going at about 400 kilometers per second, but it looks as though it will be geo-affected. It will take two or three days to get here depending on the state of the solar wind, so we'll take a look at the ACE data and see what's going on there. The temperature of the solar wind has remained relatively constant as is the density, but the uh, velocity has continued to drop as we predicted. The high energy electron flux has reached high levels for the last 24 hours, but the sun has produced no proton events. The auroral zone seems to have quieted down quite a bit since yesterday, and the uh, KP index is running at very low levels. So in summary then, the X-ray background has risen to the B6 level. The sunspot number is at 144. The radio sun intensity is at 143 solar flux units. The solar wind speed has dropped to 460 km per second with a density of approximately 1 proton per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions are rated as quiet. So my 24 hour forecast is that C and M flares are likely, X flares are possible, sunspot number will remain high, CMEs remain likely, so the wind speed will drop lower and the chances of a geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours is unlikely but after that we may be experiencing a minor level of, of storming. Interestingly the composite coronal image doesn't show any major reasons coming back over the next few days so I'm not sure what we're seeing on the northeast limb in these SXI data but let's keep an eye on it just in case it's something interesting. The answer to the trivia question is that there will be 12 new moons this year. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.